Forced to work from home by your employer? Laid off or feeling depressed at home? Do you want to make money working from anywhere? We'll show you how to do it from your couch. It's time for another episode of the Work From Home Show. Coming to you from their homes in Austin, Texas and Tampa, Florida. Here are your hosts, Adam and Naresh. Welcome back to another episode of the Work From Home Show. I'm Naresh Fissa with Adam Schrader and we have a third person here with us. His name is Tom, Tom Antion. By the way, is that how you pronounce it, Tom? Antion. Antion. Okay, Adam, you're going to want to. We have Tom Antion. Tom is a business consultant and public speaker who helps small businesses thrive online. He's the publisher of Great Speaking, an online magazine on public speaking with 92,000 subscribers in more than 80 countries. Wow, that's that's incredible. And he also operates the Great Internet Marketing Retreat Center in Virginia Beach. He is the host of the Screw the Commute podcast. We're, we're fans of that. We're definitely fans of that. Uh, Tom, welcome to the Work From Home show. Oh, thanks, Narration and Adam. Good, good to be here. But, you know, I don't know about this Work From Home stuff. I mean, I've been doing it 43 years. I don't know. It might... <laughs> It might be time for a change. I don't. I don't know. Let's see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, that's why. That's why we got you on because you have. Been you couldn't find here. anybody older, <laughs> older than me to, to do it. <laughs> well, we wanted to get you on to see if you knew anybody older. That's the end, end of interview. We just need to know if someone's older. older than me. <laughs> well, we did interview somebody. I, I think Adam. She said she, the she mid eighties. Thirty-five, yeah, for thirty-five years. Oh, that's so. a, she's wet behind the ears, man. <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> a virtual newbie. Yeah, yeah. So, so Tom, tell us uh, before we get into the nitty gritty, tell us just a little bit about your background, your resume, why you've been working from home for forty-three years, and also include uh, just reading your bio. You apparently went to a top twenty college on a football scholarship. So, just give us a an overview. Yeah, uh, the. Uh, uh, I came from a tiny town in Western Pennsylvania. I mean, literally to this day, the population is only 500 people. And so, and we lived in the suburbs. <laughs> <All right>? So <laughs> it was total sticks. I mean, so I grew up the baby of six boys. My dad came from uh, Syria on a cattle boat uh, back in the early 1900s. And he was an entrepreneur. In fact, they're making a documentary in Hollywood about us called The American Entrepreneur. Because he kind of made me into an entrepreneur, and then I've kind of helped thousands of entrepreneurs. So, um, so that's uh, you know I just never uh, probably have authority problems too because I never wanted to work for anybody else. So, so um, I just always had my own business. In fact, I, I started in college. Uh, that top twenty school you talked about I was uh, I went on a football scholarship, but I was always entrepreneurial. So. By the time I graduated, I owned five apartment buildings and a hotel. <laughs> so, so uh, that is uh, incredible for a college <laughs> football player. <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah, yeah, because I got to tell you, uh, I got to tell you, there was 31 people in our freshman picture. Only six of us graduated, so it wasn't a bastion of knowledge. Put it that <laughs> way, <laughs> and, uh, which is exactly uh, what college football is known for: is bastion. Oh, of knowledge. exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, well, actually, there, there, uh, it, 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 where I went to school. Now they're, they're, they got a thing going, like to get to letter in sports now. You have to know what letter it is. <laughs> and then you can get your letter. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, it was um, it was uh, a good experience there. But uh, I was always business oriented. So I, uh, like I said before, I graduated. I had five apartment buildings and a hotel, starting with absolute nothing. This was long before the book No Money Down came out and all of that stuff. And uh, and then. Uh, I just worked for myself uh, ever since, so never uh, never had a job. So when you say that you owned the apartment complexes, were they local or were they around the surrounding areas around the nation? Like, what? How did you how did you get into that? Well, it's not something uh, most college kids do. <laughs> well, the thing is, is uh, in those days they were renting by the person in uh, uh, at a college town. You know, so the apartment buildings were local, and the uh, uh, 
I was reading this book. I remember vividly sitting at the place called Sunny Sunnyside uh, on, a, on a sidewalk, reading this book long before Mo No Money Down by William Dickerson called How I Turned $1,000 into a $1 Million Dollars in Real Estate. Then the new version had $3 million. And I said, oh, man, I could do that. What's that? It's a big deal. So, uh, And my brothers are telling me, oh, what's wrong with you? You'll go broke. And I'm thinking, I don't even have a couch to repossess. How can I go broke? <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, so I uh, used the techniques. I found an older lawyer who was renting to college students who wanted to retire. And I talked him into letting me take over the building. And then I par uh, that was a threeplex. And then I actually took the, uh, the, the seat. You know, my dad really taught me to do stuff. And that's part of the you know, message I want to convey is don't, you know, learn to do stuff and you can be, you can save expenses and be profitable in your business so much faster. So I, uh, they were taking the seats, the wooden seats out of uh, Mountaineer Stadium at this uh, WVU where I went. And I went and grabbed them all up, not all 30,000 of them, but, but I went and grabbed them all up. I bought a $12 circular saw from Kmart and I ripped them down the middle and made two by fours out of them and remodeled part of this building to be able to uh, to put two more students in it at $125 a month each. So I got the income up, and then I parlayed that into a fourplex I bought, and then a duplex, and then I just went <laughs> kept doing that. And then uh, one of the big messages, I know we have a little bit of time today that I want to convey is, is the, the overriding principle is give before you get. So I'm renting uh -huh. to all these college students, and I'm renting because I'm charging them more than I was paying. <laughs> so so uh, I was renting from this guy named Frank Biafora. At the end of the semester, he came over and uh, said, I want to talk to you. And I'm thinking, oh, geez, what do we do now? But <laughs> as he had come over to work on the house, I always said, hey, Frank, I'll help you with this, but you teach me what we're doing, if we're putting gutters on or whatever it was. He said, you know, in 25 years... Not one, I've been renting students in this town, not once ever has anybody offered to help me, let alone want to learn something from it. And he said, hey, I got a hotel about 20 minutes from here in Fairmont, West Virginia, and I want you to have it. I want to retire and go to Florida. He says, if you can come up with the first mortgage, I'll hold the second mortgage. And for those of you that don't know stuff, that means I don't have to put any money down, <laughs> okay? And... Uh, and then uh, you can pay the first mortgage, you can pay me off the second mortgage, and you can run, own this hotel. And so I went to 50 different lending institutions who were shooing me away like, oh, yeah, you got a couple apartments, but you're, you know, this is a little bit too much for you to, to chew. And I said, you know, I wouldn't quit because my dad taught me don't quit ever. And so the 50th one, of course, is the one that gave me the first mortgage. He took the second mortgage. I ran the place for five years. I'm in college making $60,000 a year uh, on this, in the 70s. This is in the 70s. And then I sold the building to the city for hundreds of thousands, and, uh, and that's how it went. So, But the thing is, is just the fact that I went and said, hey, I will help you, and you teach me, impress somebody. And in today's atmosphere, that would impress the heck out of nobody would do that. You know, they'd say, "Hey, give me the building, and you go screw yourself." You know, <laughs> so, so uh, just uh, give before you get, and be persistent are some of the two biggest things in the world that can set you apart. Yeah, completely agree. Now, which which college was that where you? Played this football? was West by God, Virginia. You have to say by God. If you say, <laughs> if you say Virginia, West Virginia, <laughs> but we got no respect. We went out to California to play the California Golden Bears uh, at Berkeley, and uh, and we were the West Virginia Mountaineers, but yeah. on the marquee in in California, they called us the Western Virginia Coal Miners. <laughs> they didn't even get it right, yeah. <laughs> and then we beat them. So <laughs> showed them That's what they get. Yeah. yeah. So. Tell us now, kind of shifting gears, your podcast, Screw the Commute. Mm -hmm. You kind of started it for the same purposes that we started, except you started it way before we did it. We recently started our work from home show. Tell us what inspired you to start the Screw the Commute podcast and what topics do you go over? Well, you know, I've taught uh, Internet stuff and everything f since 1996, roughly. Uh, I started on the commercial Internet in 94. And I always poo-pooed podcasts. I mean, they didn't exist back then, but I mean, because nobody was making any money, 
the people were doing ego trips and making no money out of it. And then a couple of years ago, I started seeing a different trend and the people were making money from them. And for several things uh, really tipped it off for me to go ahead and do this. And one was that new cars are uh, able to play podcasts, just talk into the dashboard, say, hey, play Screw the Commute podcast, and it starts playing. And the listenership has exceeded XM radio, which people have to pay for, you know, so they don't have to pay for podcasts. So that was one thing. That's uh, millions and millions of more listenership. And then the other thing was the in-house devices like uh, Alexa and the Google, whatever it's called, where you could say to Alexa, Alexa, I better be quiet, not to say it too loud. <laughs> because it'll Amazon be thing. Over there. Yeah. Uh, the, hey, Amazon thing. Play the Screw the Commute podcast, and boom, there I start talking to you. Uh, so those were two of the things that pushed me over the edge. And then my method on podcasts, uh, see, most people that start podcasts, they want to get a sponsor. And that is the most pitiful thing on earth because yeah. uh, you, <laughs> you, the thing is, is you make between 12 and $18 per thousand downloads. Now, if you guys are just starting – you know it ain't easy to get a thousand downloads, all right? And so you might make twelve or eighteen bucks for an episode or six dollars or something. Say, so the way I teach my students is to you be the sponsor of every podcast. So I've done two hundred and seventy some podcasts. I'm the sponsor. I got my products and services. If I sell one ebook, that's more money than I would have got from chasing a sponsor around. See? So so you be the sponsor of your own podcast and just keep creating products. Going back to just the working from home, what was the first work from home business you had after your real estate and how has that kind of morphed over the years? Well, I was, uh, this is kind of a, fr uh, a thing as I was a freelance charter pilot. So I technically got the jobs from my home, but I did have to go and get in an airplane and fly somewhere, but it wasn't a regular commute kind of thing. So uh, that was the first thing. But then the other one is I, I actually owned a nightclub from 1980 to 1986, and I lived above the nightclub. So technically, I, I served liquor out of my home. Basically. You worked from a club. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and that uh, that was uh, the first one out of college that I actually uh, uh, had a business out of my home. Uh, the rental business was more passive. I mean, I had literally nothing to do but pick up rent checks and deposit them. And that was it. I right? play tennis and do whatever I wanted. So I was actually getting bored, which almost killed me because I was in two gunfights, knife fights. And uh, uh, bikers trying to kill me. I survived a hundred violent encounters in the in the uh, nightclub business. And so, uh, so sounds like you were a club owner. Well, yeah, and the club owner who I, people knew where he lived. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's right. And uh, they shot up my car with shotgun blasts, and uh, and so uh, it, it was a pretty nasty thing. But anything that you live through that you know makes you tougher. So I actually spun that off to a, a, a website called Brutal Self Defense. And so it's 14 hours of the nastiest possible things you can do to another human being. <laughs> well, let's be a nice call them human beings. A lot of these people are not so, not so human. But, but uh, yeah, so that was, uh, that was the first one. I worked out of my home. And then when I got out of that business, I thought, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to do something that's going to be fun for me and fun for somebody else. And then I went and tore my Achilles tendon. And so in 1986, when the nightclub closed, I was, um, and, and it closed, actually it closed because the drinking age went from 18 to 21 and wiped me out. I lost like 400,000 bucks, lost wow. everything. And then I uh, tore my Achilles tendon. Whoever was supposed to pay the health insurance didn't do it. So I was actually living, this sounds like a country song, I know, but uh, you know, <laughs> but I was living on a in a vacant house on a mattress on a floor with a black and white TV, which you guys are too young to probably have ever even seen one. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I used to I used to own one in my room growing up. But oh, yeah. it was an antique, right? You had, yeah. had an antique store. It was my father's <laughs> first TV when he yeah. moved to the United States in the seventies. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so and so I'm sitting there and I'm I'm, I'm broke. I'm living off credit cards, can't walk, and I'm watching Candid Camera. And I kept humor. I was always a funny guy because the fat guys are always funny, you know. So uh, so 
I, uh, I'm watching Candy Cameron. I'm thinking, you know, people love this show, but nobody can participate in it because unless you live in California and you happen to get caught. So I was doodling a little devil sticking his tongue out at you. And that's my federally registered trademark for a company I started called Prank Masters. And we custom design practical jokes. I moved to Washington, D.C., starved to death for six months, and then started to get a bunch of publicity, ended up on Associated Press and doing TV and radio all around the world because of it. And that's what kicked off my speaking career. So the point there is to keep yourself upbeat in the face of adversity. I mean, I was the biggest shot in the whole state owning this big nightclub, and then I was a nobody living on a mattress. But the thing is, it wasn't me. Uh, you know, just because I'm living on a mattress doesn't mean that I'm a nobody anymore. You know, so you just have to keep uh, upbeat, keep your your eyes open for opportunities, and uh, and uh, look what happens. So, so that's uh, that was that part of my life. Yeah, and I, sh- I should just throw a comment in there regarding the Screw the Commute podcast. Just podcasting in general to our listeners. We're going to have a separate episode, Adam and me, talking about how you could start your own podcast. But what I want to reiterate is what Tom said earlier, and that is you should give first. You should be giving and you should give before you receive. Um, Podcasting, Adam and I, we started this podcast because we legitimately thought that we could give back and help people during this time. It's extremely timely, uh, at least our podcast, to, to what's going on in the world. So I think uh, your message of, of giving is, is absolutely true. But how can people start their own businesses from home, Tom? Well, the thing is, is this is uh, if uh, you know, I don't know how far your listenership is at this point. But if, if you're in the United States, Canada, uh, this is the easiest time in the world to start a business. I mean, you just start. You don't have to start a corporation. You don't have to start an LLC. You can be a sole proprietor and just start. And that's the whole thing is most people never start. They think about it forever and then never do it. I mean, some study came out that 98% of people in the corporate arena would love to have their own business, but hardly any of them do anything about it. So what I suggest is people start side hustles. Uh, and and my, my attitude about this is if you start a side hustle, especially online, I want to eventually make it too expensive for you to go to work anymore to your regular job (laughs) because you're doing so well in your side hustle and that there's a lot of benefits to that because let's say you want to go jockey a 20 grand raise well if you're in there desperate you know they can sniff that from 100 miles away but if you're making all this money on the side and you really don't care what they say that comes through also. And you can even explain it. Look, I got this side deal and it's starting to take off. And, and I'd love, I love you guys. I'd love to stay here, but I just can't afford it anymore at this salary. You know, that's a whole different way to approach uh, people. So uh, you might grab yourself another 20 grand a year as, you know, as you work them both together. But eventually you want to get out of the corporate rat race and, uh, and, you know, people calling me up all over the place, Tom, you okay, Tom, you okay. Cause we're recording this at a time when uh, people were at home and I, what's the difference. I've been home for the last 43 years. <laughs> I don't even notice. See, and I'm not making light of the, all the bad things that are happening currently. But the thing is, uh, if you, work from home, like you you, you guys are promoting, um, you, it just doesn't affect you as much. Your overhead isn't enormous. You're still going to live there anyway. And and it's, uh, it's so critical. I call it like an insurance policy for your family because you can bring in money no matter what's going on. And that's, uh, that's a critical thing. Yeah. And I completely agree about the side hustle. That's how I started my company, Christian mm-hmm. Media and Marketing. It was a side hustle, I want to say, for four years at least before I went out on my own and jumped in full time. So side hustle, don't just quit your job today because you think you're going to become the next Steve Jobs. Start that side hustle. Yeah, you're going to have to put in more hours. You're going to have to come home and continue working. But that's what you have to do if you you want to get into (laughs) entrepreneurship, if you want to be a successful business owner. That's just what you have to do. Yeah, yes, and, and don't uh, act like uh, you know. If you're a single person, especially, don't act like you're coming home and doing a whole bunch of important stuff either. Let's be <laughs> <honest>. <laughs> I was single when I got started. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean that that it it's uh, it can be a strain for family uh, folks because you know uh, mom or dad comes home and then they're working again, you know. But the thing is, in the long run, uh, as long as you don't turn out like that Harry Chapin song "Cats in the Cradle," where you know he just ignored his kid, <laughs> those kid grew up and ignored him. But uh, uh, yeah, it could get uh, more difficult in the short run, but the freedom that it gives you when I've, I mean, I interview entrepreneurs, you know, I've uh, done out of, out of those 270, uh, probably 200 of them are interviews and virtually every single person that I've interviewed that's an entrepreneur said the freedom is, is one of the biggest things in their entire life, why they love it. So you have an entire website dedicated to suggestions of tools and products that you think people can use to make uh, working easier. Can you go over some of the ones from the, some tools that you think are the most helpful for people as they're getting started? Well, the, th the, one of the things, uh, that I want to impress upon people is, is, is you can't, I mean, if you went to, to, to start a McDonald's, you're looking at $2 million franchise fee probably, or $2 million with the real estate. And you'd be sleeping in the bathroom to make it work because you mortgaged your house and you just got your whole life invested. And when, when I suggest a tool to somebody that's $129 a month to get their business going and they cry about it, I'm thinking you better stay at work. You don't have right now the right attitude about this. It'd be like a, a carpenter saying, yeah, you know what? After I do a bunch of jobs, I'll buy a hammer. <laughs> you know, it's just ridiculous. So you got to you have to have some tools. But the problem is, is some free tools are great and some aren't. So if you want everything free, you're going to have a substandard business. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have glitches. So you have to get some experience and knowledge to know which free tools are good and which aren't and where you should invest your startup money for your business. Can you tell us about your best tips, tricks, and techniques to get started working from home and to do well, to make lots of money working from home? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the two things, in fact, I just recorded a podcast today about keeping your expenses low and your gross profit high. See, in our digital society now, and, and 10 years ago, I say, okay, the world's not all digital. We were selling DVDs, and I still sell DVDs, in fact, but but not that many. And theatrical DVDs are still okay, but you know, most of us are not going to produce a million-dollar movie. Uh, but with gross profits of 97% for digital products, you have to really try hard to mess up. <laughs> to mess up all right as long as you pick topics that are important so so my whole thing is that you get into the information selling world because it's the highest profit least hassle least dangerous i had a, a potential student talking to me the other day oh, i can't decide if i want to go in your mentor program or buy real estate and i'm thinking how would you like to have a big apartment building today and nobody can pay their rent you know, and then now you just lost your credit, lost the building, went into bankruptcy. You know, where with this kind of business, uh, the expenses are really low, the risk is extremely low, and the potential upside is enormous. So you want to think in those terms. Don't don't think in terms that oh, I'm I bake cookies. Everybody loves my cookies, so I'm going to start a bakery. <laughs> I mean, I, if I would, I would hit that person in the head with a baseball bat or give them one to hit themselves in. <laughs> Because you got, you know, a tiny little fraction of profit margin. You got uh, loss and spoilage and, uh, and oh, I mean, just, uh, I just get sick about it. Although it does make me want to eat some cookies right now. <laughs> but, but it's uh, the information age allows you to start a super high profit business with v a minimal investment. And the more you can learn, the, the cheaper it is. For instance... You could take a WordPress course. We have one for 97 bucks and then make a world-class website for about a hundred bucks. Or you could go to a web designer who's going to see you coming because they can tell in two seconds, you don't know what you're doing and charge you 5,000. You know, so yeah, Adam used to be a web guy, I guess he, you know, how long would it take you to know somebody doesn't know what they're talking about? Yeah. Like 10 seconds. If, if you're like every client who Adam and I have had every single one. <laughs> exactly. 
But so I've never what, charged five thousand for a website, people. Never done that. Well, I mean, some people would hit, uh, you know, unscrupulous people would hit them for fifteen thousand if they could, you know. So that's the thing. Uh, but the more knowledge you have, the better you can um, uh, make a profit, and that's the whole thing. Or survive in like today's economy with uh, everything went to heck. Well. Uh, if you have watched your P's and Q's and not run up enormous expenses with a small profit, then you can still survive. And then when times are really good, like they were just previous, you can just clean up. You know, so it's keep your expenses low and your profit high. The next thing is, is you do things that create recurring income. So I could just quit right now. And, and this sounds like BS, but uh, if I explain it to how it works... Uh, it's not so outrageous. Uh, I could quit right now and have a couple hundred grand a year coming in. And and I use this when I'm on radio and TV all the time. I said I couldn't stop the money coming in my checking account if I tried. Couldn't stop it. And that's from recurring and re residual affiliate programs where you recommend somebody else's product and then you get a commission for it. But the next month when they buy the product, you get a commission. And the month after that, and the month after that. And so I recommend it once, and I get paid forever. I've got one that's been paying me 18 years. I, I, I wrote a, a, an ebook in four hours at a layover in the McCarran Airport in, in Las Vegas. And that book, that free ebook, you know, and again, that sounds like BS. But the thing is, you can't do... What I tell you about in the ebook, unless you buy a product, the tool to do it with, it's brought in $3.6 million and anywhere from six dollars to $15,000 a month still. That's recurring income. And you can go to websites like uh, residualincome.com or just type that into Google, residual affiliate programs or recurring affiliate programs. And there's all kinds of stuff that will keep paying you as long as the person stays in. So that's that's just one of the ways to really jack up the amount of money that you make. And I go back to this thing. It's an insurance policy for you and your family in case you get hurt or sick or something happens. You still got money coming in. Yeah, two comments about that. Number one, the products that you're talking about are called info products. And yep. I came from that industry. That's how I got started working for one of the largest. You probably heard of Agora Publishing, Tom. Sure, absolutely. But I was Who a, hasn't? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was a director at Agora Publishing. It's kind of how I started my career and learned all about the info mark the info product space, online and digital marketing. And I saw firsthand, like you said, we're talking 97, 98% margins. It's mm -hmm. absolutely insane because you're selling information. So it's a beautiful, beautiful industry to be in. And we're going to have some episodes coming up later, Adam and I, talking about this uh, in further detail. But the other thing that I want to tell you is uh, one of our clients was, this was many years ago, maybe seven, eight years ago, one of our clients was a very large bullion exchange company. And it was a completely affiliate-based model where they didn't go out and spend a bunch of money on advertising. They just signed up affiliates and said, if you promote us to your audience, to your file, you get X percent mm -hmm. commission right. over the life of the customer. So yep. that's forever, residual, in perpetuity. And so there are still people who forgot that they even signed up to be affiliates <laughs> and that they promoted this eight years ago. And every quarter, they're getting, like you said, every quarter they're getting you know, three figures, four figures. In, in some cases, they were big businesses, Agora franchises mm -hmm. that promoted, and they have different management teams now, different everything. And they're like, why are we getting, you know, $4,000 a month coming for, or a quarter <laughs> coming from this company that I've never heard of? Well, it's because of three emails that you sent out in, in at the end of 2012. That's, That's all they did. That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful thing for sure. Yeah. So, Tom, how do you decide, you know, we talked about giving before you get, how do you decide what content you give away for free and what content you, you sell? People ask me that all the time, and I tell, I tell them, that, Adam, everything I ever said in my entire life is for free somewhere on the Internet. <laughs> you pay me to put it in one place for you. People are lazy. All right, so if you can uh, take uh, an amalgamation of all this, uh, what you do, and uh, you give away a little piece of it, and then uh, people want to buy the rest of it all in one place. 
So you can sell a kit or a system. Those are good terms to use when you're, because uh, it sends the message to people, oh, okay, uh, we got, um, this is all we need to buy to get this done what we want to do. See, so, so I just give till I bleed and then uh, put it all in one place for you for, uh, you know, to sell the stuff. So most everything uh, is available somewhere in little pieces. So that's uh, so I give away everything basically, but you pay me to put it in one place. Awesome. Well, Tom, you're going to be sticking around. You're you're going to be on our next episode as well. So oh, I we'll, am. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you okay. are. You are. So that's going to be a good one on on digital marketing. To all our listeners out there, visit us workfromhomeshow.com, get on our mailing list. You'll get a free copy of my book, 50 Shades of Marketing. If you have any feedback for Tom, for any of the guests we've had, for Adam or me, hello at workfromhomeshow.com. That's hello at workfromhomeshow.com. Tom, really, really good episode, but you're going to stick around. So for all our listeners, next episode, Tom's going to be right back talking about some digital marketing. So until next time, Keep on working from home.